Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to once again talk about the Flash Door Gen 2. We've had a bunch of new information dropped about it. It's going to be arriving in the next couple of weeks. It's already starting to appear on numerous retail outlets. Any of them that I find I'll stick them down there in the comments. Google hasn't even really indexed any of these yet but we've got a whole bunch more information about this device to really sink our teeth into and although of course we didn't do a massive review on the device I want to talk more about it this is the previous generation this is the flash door uh, gen 1 this is the 10 GBE version there this one knocked around for about 750 to 800 nicker I think a number of you just straight away or were wondering let's face it what the old lolly was going to be like the 6 bay it looks like it's going to arrive at around the 950 to 999 mark again mark your currency of choice and that is for the six bay device the 12 bay again that is 12 m.2 nvmes that one's going to arrive about 13 13.99 again factor in your currency factor in your tax factor in your delivery there so that's a notable increase now that increase in price i would argue a big part of that is to do with the scale up in hardware both inside and out so let's tackle the inside first actually for a change so straight away it is that v3000 cpu that we saw already featured in the lock store we've already done extensive testing with the lock store gen 3 system uh, we had a four bay model that also had four nvmes inside and that had 10 gb at 5 gb had USB Type 4 there on the rear and it was able to fully saturate all of them but we'll get to that later. When it came to the internal hardware that V3000 CPU isn't going to be for everyone. A 4 core 8 thread processor there doesn't have integrated graphics but it makes up for it with sheer horsepower and lane distribution that is a Gen 4 CPU there. It's got 20 lanes to play with distributed across the whole system. Now the 6 bay model there, the F806T, uh, the Flash Door 6 Gen 2, uh, arrives across those 6 M2 NVMe bays, each of which are Gen 4. Now, the 12 bays that are inside the 12 bay system, the FS6812X, those are a mixture of Gen 3 and Gen 4. We talked about this at Computex earlier this year, that... The lane allocation across all of them is a little bit more higgledy-piggledy on the 12 bay. Once we've got the real unit here in the studio and we break down what the lane distribution is, we'll be able to know more about it. But we already had early indications from the brand that the speed and the generation uh, of each PCIe um, established across the PCIe uh, M2 slots is going to be up and down. So whether it's all of them are going to be times one or times two, some Gen 4, times some Gen 3, we can't really confirm. We just know that the 12 bay is going to have mixed generation speeds uh, on the uh, on the across those, but the six seems to be that they're all going to be Gen 4. But again, we don't know what the time speed is going to be on those. But what we can confirm is the memory. The six bay model is arriving with eight gig of DDR5 memory, and the 12 bay is arriving with 16 gig of DDR5 memory, ECC. That is right. One of the ways in which the two are differentiated is that the 6-bay model doesn't have ECC memory included with it. It supports ECC memory, and you can get it elsewhere when you scale it up across the two slots up to 64 gig. But it is the Pro model there, that uh, the 12-bay that arrives with 16 gig of ECC out the gate. Now, I know that's going to ruffle some feathers, I think. I kind of understand that they're going to have to differentiate the cost. And by the way, this, these aren't the only ways in which the two devices are uh, different. The CPU being the same, notwithstanding. But I think there are definitely going to be users looking at the 6-bay. And, you know, 8 versus 16 gig, a lot of users will be able to take that on board. But ECC versus non-ECC memory, particularly when you cross the 8 into 16 gig line, even when you move up to 32 gig and stuff like that, when you when you look at the price differentials on memory modules and particularly looking at ECC at less than 16 gig the prices are and even availability is sort of all over the place there is argument of course that some people are going to think oh that's just them trying to create some sort of pricing tier between the two units and I can't confirm that I have no idea whether that's true or not but I can only say that when I've shopped for ECC memory for builds it's a real pain in the bum. One improvement in the Gen 2 that is the same across both systems is an improvement on the cooling system. Once you're looking into more aggressive CPUs than the Intel Seller and the previous generation, and you're looking at Gen 4 SSDs, which notoriously get hotter, you're going to have to ramp up that cooling system. The previous generation flash door only had a single fan inside. This needs more. And with that, it's got a dual fan cooling system inside and enhanced copper pipe cooling as well throughout. Again, once we've got our hands on the device, we are going to dig deep into that we're going to do some thermal cameraing on it as well cannot wait but 
At least for now, we do know that they have addressed that calling there, but until we've got the device, we don't know just how well or how necessary it's going to be there. And what about port and connections? You want to interface with this bugger, right? Well, I'll say right now, neither generation, uh, neither Gen 2 system in the 6 or the 12 bay matches the ports and connectivity that we saw on the Locker Store Gen 3 series that we talked about around about a week, a week and a half ago. What do I mean by that? Well, both systems arrived with 10GBE, with the 6 bay model having one 10GBE port, and 12 bay model having two 10GBE ports on the rear there. There is no 5 gig port on the rear. I don't know if it's a physical space issue. I don't know if it's a heat issue with those uh, network controllers inside. I just know that that's a bit of a shame as far as I'm concerned. I'm Not so much on the 12 bay, because you've got two 10Gs there, and we'll get onto another thing that the, uh, the device has got going for it. But on the 6 bay model, a single 10GBE failover. You know, I would rather have a second port, even if that second port was a 5 gig or a 2.5 gig port. I wish there was a, a, like two ports there on the rear. I mentioned this when I was talking about the original Gen 1. Uh, t uh, 12 bay model this one here as much as I like that it's got 10 GBE it's only got one port now there is the counter argument of course that you can get hold of USB to 2.5 and 5 gigabit network adapters but that's an additional purchase there I kind of assumed this system would factor in a bit of failover there but again we'll hold off the major criticism to the review but and I think it does have in both the 6 bay and the 12 bay model is USB type 4 uh, network connectivity there so whether you want to utilize it to connect your storage drives and take advantage of 40 gigabits per second connectivity or you want to network interface into it which we've already seen Acer Store has now adopted we saw it in our locker store review when we were seeing that not only does this mean support of things like Thunderbolt 4 but USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 network connectivity opens the door to a much faster network interface so maybe that could be another counter argument for the network failover but I would never consider a USB 4 slash TB4 connection as a suitable network failover. Having that uh, with another network interface because it is a point-to-point -point connection. You don't really get Thunderbolt switches. What you have is a Thunderbolt client system, a Windows or Mac system, network interfacing with the NAS. Or perhaps, you know, with USB Type 4 becoming more ubiquitous, there are options out there. Nonetheless, this does lead to both the 6-bay and the 12 bay having a greater degree of network bandwidth than its predecessors to take advantage of Gen 4 SSDs. And with each slot supporting up to 8 gig SSDs inside, that is a whole lot of storage even in the 6 bay. But I'm going to hold my horses there because realistically, when the review comes in, that's where the final judgment is going to take place. But for those of you that are considering the Flash Door Gen 1, which does seem like it's going to remain on sale with its integrated graphics processor, at least you've got a lot more information now to make a decision, at least weighing up them hardware and price versus price, or hold out for the review in the coming week or so, where we will dig in quite deep. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, again, I'll link to all of the resources I've discussed in this video. and. If I found it on sale anywhere, I'll chuck it down there. If this video is helpful and if you're going to go to those shops anyway, please use those links. It allows us to keep doing what we do at NAS Compares. We get a small commission and it's just me and Eddie doing what we do. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.